protection. Don't touch the stove. Don't, don't, don't cross the street unless you got an adult with you. And when it comes time for them to learn how to cross the street, look both ways. And then look both ways again. That's what overprotective fathers yes. <laughs> But as stewards, we also provide provision. Mm -hmm. we, we make sure they have clothes. And, and I particularly like to do school shopping starting in April. <laughs> to spread that expense out. Amen. But logistically, it doesn't work when you got a little kid because they grow from April to September. Amen. And the retailers ain't trying to help you out because in April they don't have clothes that would be appropriate for them to wear in August. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Then you got to go back to the store because somewhere down the line we realize here in Maryland our weather changes, we get colder, we got to wait for them to put out the winter clothes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Do y'all ever stop to think about that? Retail works against the Proverbs 31 wife. She's constantly doing stuff to prepare for the seasons that are to come. But only, it, it, nowadays, because we don't weave clothes and all of that stuff, we're at the, at the mercy of the retailer. I'm not trying to put the retailers out of business or anything, but, you know, y'all remember that shirt that uh, Denise Huxley made, that Gordon Cottrell knockoff thing, you know? Amen. Yeah, some of y'all, some of y'all might be, never mind, I'm going to leave that alone. But fathers are stewards, and they have to give provision, and they have to provide a coverage over over their children. They cover their children with prayer. Right now. How many parents are out here praying for their children Amen. constantly? Amen. I'm, I, I pray for my kids every single day. Every single day I'm praying for them. I'm praying for them that they get to know God the way that I know God, the way that my wife knows God. I Amen. pray for them for their health, for their strength. I pray for them for their sanity because two of them have children of their own. Amen. You want something to challenge your sanity? Have a child. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I'm not trying to go against God's word, be fruitful and multiply, but I'm telling you, when you multiply, you got to lean on the Lord. Come on, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and as stewards, we always have to have an end in mind. You remember the parable that was told about the three stewards? One was given one talent, one was given five talents, one was given ten talents. When the master went away, when the, when the master came back to do with ten talents, he done a good job, it had, it had grown and multiplied. And the dude with five talents had grown and multiplied. The dude with one talent wasn't real bright, and I'm sure the master knew that. He just gave him the one talent to see what he was going to do with it. He didn't do nothing with it. He went and buried it. Come on, somebody. Amen. But you always got to have the end in mind. That's where prayer, protection, and provision comes in. Amen. You got to have an end in mind. And the end in mind for me with my children is to get them to that point where they can take care of themselves. Amen. Come on, somebody. Come on, baby. See, fatherhood is an investment. Because in order to do all of those things, we have to put ourselves out there. You can't be a father and sit back and be uninvolved. It's easy to do that because if, we, if we're a father and we're uninvolved, we can sit back and we don't have to deal with the, the, the side effects that come from trying to help your child succeed. If you're, if you're a father that's a godly father, the, the, the success for you is that they get to know God like you know God. If you just... Get to know God the way that I know God. I, I, I'm not too pressed about you worshiping the way that I worship. I just want you to know him. Because if you know him like I know him, then you're going to have inside of you a desire to worship him like I worship him. When you begin to realize that dad is dad because dad is on his knees and has submitted himself to the will of God and is leaning completely and solely on God, I want you to understand something. It gets exciting to you. And you start coming and wanting to worship. And then you start figuring out, you know, what can I do, God, to lift up your kingdom? Because then I realize that dad has been, been, been running after you. He's been chasing after you like we sang earlier. You know, and, and, and as he's chased after you, Blessings were coming and they were flowing his way. I don't know how dad put two and two together to come up with five. Come on, somebody. Right now. 
You think Jesus was 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 just uh, showing off with two uh, two fish and five loaves of bread? You think he was showing off? He was giving an example to fathers that have to trust God, and they have two fish and five loaves of bread. I've had so many two fish and five loaves of bread uh, 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 scenarios or issues go on in, in my house where I needed to make ends meet. Come on, somebody. Amen. I ain't always been retired. Ain't always had four kids. Amen. Sometimes I had to make ends meet with my daughter. And I knew when raises were coming and stuff like that, and them raises were coming, I'd be doing a holy dance. Because <laughs> now it's not so hard to make the ends meet. And then when the sacrifice that my wife made, she came up out of the job market to raise the children. You can't, you can't put a price tag on that stuff. That's an investment. Amen. Fatherhood is an investment because if you want to make a difference, you're going to have to expose yourself to certain things. Let me just share a few things with you. Real quick, three things. You have to have an investment of the heart. A father has to love unconditionally. Amen. The child with the hardest head. Come on, somebody. The child that will disrespect you to the nth degree. The child that sees your example but will go out and find hope in an alcohol bottle. A drug needle. That wench that you wish he had never met in his entire life. And your heart is connected to this child and you see him going through. It's an investment of your heart. Amen. Oh, oh I, I'm not picking on anybody in particular because God has to do the same thing with us. Amen. How do you think the father in our text felt when his son jumped up and told him one day, Father... I want my inheritance, and I want my inheritance now. Now, I'm here to tell you, 2019, this is how the conversation would have ended. I said, I understand what you're asking, son, but that ain't how it rolls here on Bouch Place over here in Glen Burnie, Maryland, 2019. No, that's not how it works. Um, you go about your business and have a good day. In the meantime, uh, since you want to get my money and you know that I got to die to get my money so you can have it, I'm going to be carried. I'm going to be packed. <laughs> Marvin Gaye's dad took him out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm just joking. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to my children. But I would tell them there's a protocol. All right, now. And this father, under their protocol, said, okay, son, you're impatient. You want your money. You want to go out. You want to live your life. You think you can handle it. You can do what you need to do. So he gave him his inheritance. Now, that's a good steward right there because if you think about the economics of it, I told you before, if you're going you're gonna to start talking about stewardship, you're going to talk about economics. Now, he is giving a portion of his resources, everything that he has earned, all that he has, he has given a portion of it to his son. And I suspect that he knows that his son is going to go out and squander every bit of it. All right now. Not only does he expect that, but he knows back in those times that the streets were lined with people who were going to rob people, steal from them, beat them up, and his son could likely have been killed so that somebody else could have took that money from him. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah. This child that he loved, he had to release and go out and let him figure it out for himself. If you don't, if you don't understand, you, matter of fact, if you aren't a parent, you'll never understand. Amen. Until you become a parent. When you become a parent, you will be able to understand that sometimes you got to let your children go out and suffer what they need to suffer in order to learn a lesson. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he tells him, Dad, I got to go. I'm, I'm leaving. And I imagine his father had his heart so invested that he was praying for the child from the time he left to the time that he came back. Come on, somebody. Point number two, you need to invest your resources. In order for this father to have had the money to give to his son to carry off and foolishly go and do what he needed to do, and then still maintain a home for his wife, for his other children, 
Uh, we only we only hear the story of, of two of his sons, which possibly had daughters, a wife, servants, and other people that were depending on him. So he had to have his resources. And the only way he got the resources was because he understood the importance of investing resources. One of the things that I struggle with and I, I constantly pray about is, Lord, allow me the opportunity to build up a legacy to give to my children. The Bible tells us that we should leave a legacy to our children. That is a word. The word says that we should be able to leave a legacy to our children so that they might be able to build and they may be able to leave a legacy to their children. And so we teach the principles of godly giving. We talk about time and we talk about offerings. We talk about making sure that you have a roof over your head and how to put food in. And we talk about pride and how pride will make you fall, how pride will cause you to lose. Your, your mind and your money. Come on, somebody. Amen. But the Bible says, what parent would withhold any good thing from their child? We want to be in a position to where we can give our children what we need to give them. And when, when things go wrong, it, it doesn't jam us up. Come on, somebody. Amen. So the second point is, we have to first invest our heart, invest our resources, and place them there so that we might be able to be in a position to bless our children when they need a blessing. Amen? Amen. And the third one is invest our emotions. I, I can't tell you how many times I've considered and thought about the, the emotion that those who are raising me invested in me. All right, now. I wasn't always this good. Now, I can't lie to you right now, Shamar, because I got a witness sitting in the, in, in the auditorium. You know, it's like my wife met me when I was a teenager. She don't know what it took to get me to teenager. Amen? But y'all got a witness in the house. I, I, I didn't always make good choices. I was a smart kid, but I didn't always get good grades. I knew the rules, but I didn't always behave. I knew I wasn't supposed to touch stuff, but sometimes it's just more fun to touch it than the knife. <laughs> Those kind of things drive our parents crazy. Didn't I tell you? Those, look, that phrase right there is burned in my mind. I don't think any other child has ever, ever been told that phrase. As far as I'm concerned, that phrase was coined just for me. Oh, yeah.